Good morning. So we are going to be getting started this morning. We're in the Good News Translation of the Bible. And um, I haven't been here for a few days. We were on vacation down in Oceanside for my grandson's birthday. So um, let's go ahead and pray. Lord, I just thank you for today and I thank you for this time. And I just ask that you would bless your word as it goes forward. I pray that those that hear it would be blessed. I pray that um, you would continue to give us strength to do what we do and that we can give you honor and glory with that strength, Lord. And I just thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so here we go. You're here. Lamentations chapter 3, verses 1 through 66 today. Now we're reading from the Good News Translation this week. I am one who knows what it is to be punished by God. He drove me deeper and deeper into darkness and beat me again and again with merciless blows. He has left my flesh open and raw and has broken my bones. He has shut me in a prison of misery and anguish. He has forced me to live in the stagnant darkness of death. He has bound me in chains. I am a prisoner with no hope of escape. I cry aloud for help, but God refuses to listen. I stagger as I walk. Stone walls block me wherever I turn. He waited for me like a bear. He pounced on me like a lion. He chased me off the road, tore me to pieces, and left me. He drew his bow and made me the target for his arrows. He shot his arrows deep into my body. People laugh at me all day long. I am a joke to them all. Bitter suffering is all he has given me for food and drink. He rubbed my face in the ground and broke my teeth on rocks. I have forgotten what health and peace and happiness are. I do not have much longer to live. My hope in the Lord is gone. The thought of my pain, my homelessness, is bitter poison. I think of it constantly, and my spirit is depressed. Here we go. Yet, Yet hope, hope returns, returns when, when I, I remember, remember this, this one, one thing. thing. The Lord's unfailing love and mercy still continue. continue. Fresh, Fresh as, as the morning, as sure as, sure as, as the, the sunrise, sunrise. The, Lord the Lord is, is all I have, and so in Him, so in him I, put my hope. I put my hope. The Lord is good to everyone who trusts in Him. So it is best for us to wait in patience, to wait for Him to save us. And it is best to learn this patience in our youth. When we suffer, we should sit alone in silent patience. We should bow in submission, for there may still be hope. Though beaten and insulted, we should accept it all. The Lord is merciful and will not reject us forever. He may bring us sorrow, but His love for us is sure and strong. He takes no pleasure in causing us grief or pain. The Lord knows when our spirits are crushed in prison. He knows when we are denied the rights He gave us. When justice is perverted in court, He knows. The will of the Lord alone is always carried out. Good and evil alike take place at His command. Why should we ever complain when we are punished for our sin? Let us examine our ways and turn back to the Lord. Let us open our hearts to God in heaven and pray. We have sinned and rebelled, and you, O Lord, have not forgiven us. You pursued us and killed us. Your mercy was hidden by your anger. 
by a cloud of fury too thick for our prayers to get through. You have made us the garbage dump of the world. We are insulted and mocked by all our enemies. We have been through disaster and ruin. We live in danger and fear. My eyes flow with rivers of tears at the destruction of my people. My tears will pour out in a ceaseless stream until the Lord looks down from heaven and sees us. My heart is grieved when I see what has happened to the women of the city. I was trapped like a bird by enemies who had no cause to hate me. They threw me alive into a pit and closed the opening with a stone. Water began to close over me, and I thought death was near. From the bottom of the pits, O oh Lord, I cried out to you, and when I begged you to listen to my cry, you heard, you answered me, and told, and told me, not, me to be afraid. not to be afraid. You came, came to, my to my rescue, rescue Lord, and, and saved my life. life. Judge in my favor. You know the wrongs done against me. You know how my enemies hate me and how they plot against me. You have heard them insult me, O oh Lord. You know all their plots. All day long they talk about me and make their plans. From morning till night they make fun of me. Punish them for what they have done, O oh Lord. Curse them and fill them with despair. Hunt them down and wipe them off the earth. Okay, now we're going into our... Okay, so the book of Hebrews, uh, Hebrews. that we're about to begin, is one of the most compelling exhortations to stay true, to keep the faith that we have in all of the New Testament. And while that's true, the letter to the Hebrews is a bit of an anomaly because we don't know fully its origins. Although the Apostle Paul has been credited with authorship in several traditions, this is not very likely. And it's also unclear which Hebrews are being written to. It could have been Jewish believers in Jerusalem or possibly uh, believers in Rome. So, biblical hermeneutics is the study of the where and the why and the when of a sacred writing, believing that it mattered, that God inspired something to be written at a specific time, and that that specific time matters to our interpretation. And we can't fully do that with the book of Hebrews, although we can get close. Timothy, Paul's spiritual son, is mentioned in the letter. So... It's contemporary with Paul's writings, or maybe just slightly after. What is very clear is that persecution has begun to take place in the Jewish community. And although it's not martyrdom, what's happened is that the Jewish believers uh, and those who sympathize with them have begun to suffer ridicule. They're looked at with contempt. And so they've been thrust to the sidelines. They've been marginalized as irrelevant and, and weird. And this part we can apply directly to our cultures around the world today. As the efforts uh, of the culture try to frame followers of Jesus as irrelevant, backwards, a little weird. The pressures placed on those early Jewish believers because of this were making many of them just... It just kind of like fade back into the woodwork, like hiding their faith, doing what they could to blend in, and at the same time, others were turning their backs on the faith altogether and uh, moving back into Judaism. The letter to the Hebrews steps in and encourages Jewish believers to stay faithful to Jesus and not to turn back to their former ways. It encourages them to hold on. And, and through them, it tells us to hold fast to the hope that we have in Christ without wavering at all. And this is a very important message for believers today. 
And it just happens to be given brilliantly through the Jewish heritage and the lens of the Old Testament. And so we begin. Here we go. Hebrews <laughs> chapter 1. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors many times and in many ways through the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us through his son. He is the one through whom God created the universe. The one whom God has chosen to possess all things at the end. He reflects the brightness of God's glory and is the exact likeness of God's own being, sustaining the universe with his powerful word. After achieving forgiveness for the sins of all human beings, he sat down in heaven at the right side of God, the supreme power. The Son was made greater than the angels, just as the name that God gave him is greater than theirs. For God never said to any of his angels, You are my son. Today I have become your father. Nor did God say about any angel, I will be his father, and he will be my son. But when God was about to send his firstborn son into the world, he said, All of God's angels must worship him. What about the angels? God said, God makes his angels winds, and his servants flames of fire. About the sun, however, God said, Your kingdom, O God, will last forever and ever. You rule over your people with justice. You love what is right and hate what is wrong. That is why God, your God, has chosen you and has given you the joy of an honor far greater than he gave to your companions. He also said, you, Lord, in the beginning created the earth, and with your own hands you made the heavens. They will disappear, but you will remain. They will all wear out like clothes. You will fold them up like a coat, and they will be changed like clothes. But you are always the same, and your life never ends. God never said to any of his angels, Sit here at my right side, until I put your enemies as a footstool under your feet. What are the angels, then? They are spirits who serve God and are sent by him to help those who are to receive salvation. Chapter 2 of Hebrews Psalm oh, Psalms. 102 the Prayer of a Troubled Youth Listen to my prayer, O Lord, and hear my cry for help. When I am in trouble, don't turn away from me. Listen to me, and answer me quickly when I call. My life is disappearing like smoke. My body is burning like fire. I am beaten down like dry grass. I have lost my desire for food. I groan aloud. I am nothing but skin and bones. I am like a wild bird in the desert, like an owl in abandoned ruins. I lie awake. I am like a lonely bird on a housetop. All day long my enemies insult me. Those who mock me use my name in cursing. Because of your anger and fury, ashes are my food, and my tears are mixed with my drink. You picked me up and threw me away. My life is like the evening shadows. I am like dry grass. But you, O oh Lord, are king forever. 
All generations will remember you. You will rise and take pity on Zion. The time has come to have mercy on her. This is the right time. Your servants love her, even though she is destroyed. They have pity on her, even though she is in ruins. The nations will fear the Lord. All the kings of the earth will fear his power. When the Lord rebuilds Zion, he will reveal his greatness. He will hear his forsaken people. And listen to their prayer. We lost our Bible app. Hold on. Psalms 102. Guess we'll just read from there. Let's do that. Psalms 102. Long ago you created. Where are we at? The nations will fear the Lord. Psalms 102, 15. The nations will fear the Lord. All the kings of the earth will fear his power. When the Lord rebuilds Zion, he will reveal his greatness. He will hear his forsaken people and listen to their prayer. Write down for the coming generation what the Lord has done so that people not yet born will praise him. The Lord looked down from his holy place on high. He looked down from heaven to earth. He heard the groans of prisoners and set free those who were condemned to die and so his name will be proclaimed in Zion and he will be praised in Jerusalem when nations and kingdoms come together and worship the Lord the Lord has made me weak while I am still young he has shortened my life oh God do not take me away now before I grow old so oh Lord you live forever long ago you created the earth and with your own hands you made the heavens they will disappear, but you will remain. They will all wear out like clothes. You will discard them like clothes and they will vanish. But you are always the same and your life never ends. Our children will live in safety and under your protection, their descendants will be secure. And I know there's a Proverbs reading. So let me see if I could pull up what the Proverbs reading is today. Let's see. Proverbs 26, 21, and 22. Proverbs 26, 21, and 22. Without wood, a fire goes out. Without gossip, quarreling stops. Good morning, Kimberly. Glad that you're with us. We're in Proverbs 26, 21, and 22. Uh, 20 and 21. Charcoal keeps the embers glowing. Wood keeps the fire burning. And troublemakers keep arguments alive. Oh, it was 21 and 22. So 22 says, gossip is so tasty. How we love to swallow it. So let's not be gossips today. Let's trust in God. Speak his truth, speak his love, and share his word with those around us. So thanks for joining me this morning, and I hope that this has blessed you, and I hope that you can share it and apply it to your lives. Thanks so much. Talk to you later.